this whole range of rainbow colors in a CD because the CD acts similar to a diffraction grating. So uh, it has a track of uh, little grooves and uh, ridges that, that is basically about 500 nanometers uh, uh, wide. And the, these tracks are spaced by about uh, 1.6 micron, creating basically uh, similarly what the diffraction grating with 625 lines per millimeter would look like. So the structure of the CD is uh, something like this, like you have a label, a little bit of plastic lacquer on the top, and then you have a very thin layer of metal, that's uh, the thing that gives it its uh, reflective property, that's only about um, 50 to 100 nanometers thick, that has been deposited over a plastic. And you have these ridges, ups and downs, that called for zeros and ones, zeros and ones, and that's how the information is coded. So you have these long lines of about five kilometers of data, and when the laser shines from the bottom and kind of reads through the data, um, it actually sees uh, interference patterns uh, here, constructive and destructive interference. It's kind of uh, pretty complicated how the, the laser detects the data, quite a lot of optical in, um, elements in there. So you have this uh, huge track of parallel lines, um, something similar to about um, 41 of these tracks can fit in the width of a sheet of paper, so they're, they're quite finely spaced. Um, and because they are made of raised levels and deep levels, you are gonna have basically um, diffraction from the edges and each one of these sharp corners is gonna start acting as a source of uh, spherical waves in a way. And in all directions, like at some places, the waves are gonna interfere constructively, in some places they're gonna interfere destructively, the different wavelengths of light are gonna interfere at different angles, and that's why you see the different colors at the different angles here. So, so this kind of um, um, raised levels, ups and downs, uh, create these edges, and that's why you see that interference pattern in CDs. And you can use CDs uh, very easily um, in lamp without buying diffraction grading. You can like shine a laser on a CD, and you can observe the interference pattern, um, bright maxima right here, okay? If you have a DVD, you're gonna notice that DVDs can pack a lot more information, so their interference, uh, your, their maxima are a lot, a lot more spaced out, okay? And you can use some, some simple calculation to calculate the spacing there, okay? These holographic, so-called holographic, uh, materials that they use for packaging very often, very cool packaging, actually work in a very similar way. So there is a very thin film, plastic film, that has uh, in, that was embossed with a pattern that um, either has ridges in a certain way to create an interference pattern in a certain direction. And that, that's how you can get all kinds of uh, uh, various, I guess, patterns that these things are embossed with. And very often uh, the backing, the paper backing is um, coated with um, something metallic that's actually extremely thin, just pulverized metals. And what's interesting, if you shine a laser on these, uh, you can kind of uh, figure a little bit um, what the patterns are. Yeah, some are pretty cool, like you almost see a rotation in some of them, uh, there's a little bit of magnification. I think some of them have a Fresnel lens type of material that's embossed on them. And yeah, pretty neat. And now to go back to this uh, little, the plainest one of them all, that just looks like a shiny uh, metal sheet. If you shine a laser on it, you see a diffraction pattern that looks like a grid. And that is telling you that there is a dispersive element vertically and dispersive element horizontally. So the, the, the film here is embossed with something that has vertical and horizontal either grooves or ridges.